Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, there was a lot of activity in the house, but why? And where did it all come from? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Hey, if you have a real ghost story, share it with us because we would love to hear it. Call in anytime, 855-853-4802. You can write in anytime, realghoststoriesonline.com. Then you can also get ad-free versions of the show if you want to do that. You'll also get advanced episodes, access to the archive, become a premium subscriber, do that through Apple Podcasts, and you can try it three days free. You can sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or at ghostpodcast.com. I'm Carol Hughes, and she is Harper. Hello, hello. How's it going today? I'm going very it, good. I got a haircut yesterday. You got a haircut yesterday, and it is so cute. I absolutely love it. I got the curtain bangs and long layers. It looks actually really good. It does but look really good. Here's something funny. I'm not going to say any names or anything, but the, but the hairstylist like cut the bangs like so short. I wanted them to be like more so like to my chin, not like down to my cheeks. Well, they'll grow. The other fun thing about this haircut, nobody can see it, so What's I'm just that? describing it. Is that with the layers, it made it curlier. Oh, yes, it definitely did. And I'm very happy about that. I love that. And the other thing about Harper's hair is there are people like me who spend a lot of money to get that hair color. <laughs> you have the most beautiful red hair. I just love it. Thank you. But there are a lot of women who spend a lot of money for that. So you want to hear a ghost story? I would love to. Here we go. Hello, my name is Michael. I live just outside of Austin, Texas. I have had a lot of paranormal things happen to me since I was young. So when weird things happen, I am not so taken back by them. I have two quick stories. I love sharing with those who find interest in the paranormal. That would be us. When my wife and I first got married, we were living in Austin, but we were asked to move to my wife's property in Bastrop. And I'm not sure if I said that right. So let's call it Bastrop. The family Bastrop. Had, Bastrop. The family had asked us to move out there to help her mom since someone was reportedly walking around the property at night and scaring her mother and nephew who lived there. So we moved out there, and sure enough, there was someone walking around at night across the property. That is so weird. Like, normally, it's like, can you move out there closer to mom, you know, to keep an eye on her and help her? But this is like, we need you to watch the property because someone's walking around at night. That's spooky. She really needs a security detail. Yes. My mother-in-law had three Boston Terriers, and they barked nonstop all night till sunrise. That drives me crazy. I would not be able to sleep. I wouldn't either. And I don't like sleeping with my dogs. Well, I never have slept with my dogs outside. They always sleep inside with me. When I I don't have a dog right now, but historically. So he says, I would go outside and take my gun with me and search around the house and property for someone. But it always seemed that no matter how close I got to them, they were always ahead of me. So he was seeing someone. Yeah. On one occasion, as we drove up the driveway to the house, you could see a cell phone screen being used like a light and whoever was walking through the woods. The dogs were barking and did not chase the light. As we got closer, the light moved into the woods and then disappeared. I got out of the car and shined my large flashlight toward where we last saw the light and nothing I walked toward this spot, and I didn't see anything out of place, no branches broken or pine needles messed up, nothing. The dogs wouldn't come to me as I called them. They just barked. One morning, they were barking, and I got out of bed mad because it was early, and I went outside with my shotgun. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sorry, I shouldn't you laugh. You know, just casually go outside <laughs> as one with your does. shotgun. You know, it's like, oh, the dogs are barking. Let me get my shotgun because it sounds like he's going out to... Do something bad to the dogs. Um, <laughs> because that's what I do. That's what I do. We'll do one next week. <laughs> dogs are barking. Got to get my shotgun. Be right back. I saw the three dogs barking and growling toward the side of the house and take off running after a shadow that went across the wall to the back of the house. 
They barked, no, no, jumped at the say. shadow, and continued to the back of the house. I followed behind them and turned the corner. The dogs were barking under the house. And then, all of a sudden, jumped back and ran. I laughed at them, but thought to myself, what would make them do that? I still couldn't answer my own question about the shadow. It looked like the shadow of someone gliding across the wall, but there was no one there. It couldn't be a bird, because it would have been a six-foot bird giving off that shadow. And it couldn't be a cloud, because it moved so fast and smoothly. The sun was just rising on the other side of the house, so it couldn't be a shadow from anything Or it couldn't possibly be me, since I was on the porch, nowhere near the side of the house. Hmm. I don't know what that could have been. The room under the house has its own stories. There's something about that sentence right there that kind of gives me the jeebs. The room under the house. I don't want a room under my house. One night I was watching TV around midnight or 1 a.m. and I heard children laughing and playing under the house. At first, I thought it was just me or maybe someone left a TV on. Our room was downstairs and a thin wall separated the room from the room under the house. The room used to be a playroom for my wife and her brothers when they first built the house. Now it's just storage for junk. I heard the children playing. I turned off the volume to the TV and put my ear to the wall. I could hear boys and girls laughing and talking to each other and running around playing. I was a little freaked out, but told myself to wake up Georgia and see if she heard the kids. I woke my wife, and she said she couldn't hear anything and for me to go back to sleep. I told her to come with me so I could check the downstairs, and she could check upstairs to see if anything was on. She said she would, so I would stop bugging her. We checked all the rooms and nothing. Her mom and nephew were asleep and nothing was on. Two weeks later, as we were lying in bed talking, the sound of children playing started again. I didn't say anything and continued talking to my wife. She stopped me and said, Do you hear that? I stopped, looked around, and said, No, what do you hear? She said, Do you hear kids playing? Inside my head, I was laughing, but I told her, No, I don't hear anything. She said, listen, sure enough, you can hear children running, laughing, talking, and playing. I looked at her and whispered, told you. She looked at me and said, let's see if anything is on. Her mom and nephew had left for the weekend, so it was only us. So we started in the living room and nothing. We went through both bedrooms and nothing. We went back to the bedroom and you could still hear the kids playing. I don't know what happened on that property or what happened at the house, But more stories go with the house, and still today, there are the ghost lights that roam the property, and you get that something is watching you when you're in the old house. Let me know what you think of the stories right back with more. I'll write back with more soon. Thanks again, Michael. What do you think about all that? With the children playing, it almost reminds me of a school. Because it's multiple kids, or even like a daycare. Daycare, but then I think there's almost like something malevolent malevolent watching them, but just hasn't done anything yet. It was an old house. Maybe at one point it had been a schoolhouse. Yeah. That would be interesting to know, wouldn't it? And what a weird thing to hear is kids playing, which would be almost as creepy as hearing a child crying because it's like there are no kids here. Because obviously they don't have kids. It sounds like just four of them in the house. There's no kids in the house. No TVs on. So I think we can agree. Haunted house, right? Definitely. And I think it's weird how he referred to it as the room under the house, which normally one would call that a basement. But Mm -hmm. he says the room under the house, which makes that sound super, super creepy to me. Like, like, maybe it's not even basement. Maybe it's just, like, a small, like, boiler room. But he said that that was his his wife and her brother or somebody. That was their playroom when they were kids, the room under the house. I don't well, know. maybe it is just the basement, and they forgot how to spell basement. <laughs> he just... Oh, That's you know, I do a lot. I just find other words for like, the same thing. Instead of an attic, the room above the living room. 
The room um, above the house. What about the lights that they were seeing outside? Because he described it as like a phone light. Doesn't mean that's what it actually was, but it looked like that. But he's no, going out there crazy. with a shotgun and not ever finding anything. Yes, he's going out after a shotgun. Let me grab a gun. I'm the so dog's up. barking. <laughs> oh, the dogs are fucking gonna grab my shotgun. What do you th- do? You think that was anything? Or yeah. are they just seeing random stuff? I do think that was a thing. Because it's like the same thing that's circling like that property. I wonder if it's almost like something that that like created light on its own. What if you brought the dogs into the house and then they could fall asleep? And then if you didn't hear the dogs barking, maybe you wouldn't know whatever's creeping around out there and maybe you'd get a better night's sleep. Good point. And if there's something out there, it doesn't seem to be bugging them, right? You know, it's just shadows and weird lights. Maybe it's mm-hmm. aliens out there. I don't know. I just think if the dogs weren't barking, maybe you would sleep through it. And But I don't know what that could be. That is very odd. Here is another story. You ready? Yes. Until 10 years ago, my parents lived out of the country. Oh, wait, wait. They didn't. Until 10 years ago, my parents lived out in the country. Those are two totally different things. In and out are two totally different things. They lived about a half a mile from a cemetery where most of our relatives are buried. My father's cousin, Merle, died suddenly right after he turned 50. They were very close and the death was very hard on dad. Occasionally, he would even stop at the cemetery to visit Merle. About a month after Merle passed, things started happening at my parents' house, usually when my mom was home alone. She would find the locked sliding door standing open. Lights around the house would flicker. One morning after she made the bed, mom saw an indention on the covers as if someone heavy had been sitting on the edge of the bed. One day she called me very distressed. The back door had, and I'm using air quotes, popped open. That's how they put it in quotes. She said it didn't make any sense because when she would go to the door, the deadbolt was still in the out position so that you couldn't shut the door until you turned the deadbolt. She told me that she was sure it was Merle coming to visit Dad. It wasn't that I didn't believe her. I truly did. But until you see something for yourself, it doesn't seem real. And so one day when I was at their house, I was using their bathroom and heard the back door right outside of the bathroom open. I looked out and sure enough, the door was standing wide open. When I went to shut it, the deadbolt banged against the door frame. You could not shut the door. I pushed against the bolt and it didn't move. There was no way for that bolt to come out of the housing without it being turned on. And you know how you have to physically deadbolt like my front door is like that you just turn it and it deadbolts you can't Mm -hmm. open it even if i open the bottom it's not going to open you got to put the deadbolt back in the inside of the housing see this is why people need cameras around their house good idea this could have been pre-cameras yeah i ran out to the living room which is funny because you have in your lifetime there's always been cameras pretty much (laughs) In my lifetime, there's definitely pre-cameras. I ran out to the living... we need to know the timeline. And I'm just guessing here. I ran out to the living room to tell mom what had happened. She said, well, he always loved you. Looks like Merle wanted to say hello to you. It's kind of interesting. It's like the parents just accept it's Merle. Well, Merle loves you. Things went on, and one night mom was particularly upset. The lights had been flickering, and Dad had spent most of the day rewiring the lights on one wall, sure that it was an electrical problem. When it kept happening, my dad, in frustration, yelled, Damn it, Merle! If you want to visit, that's fine, but stop screwing with the lights! Mom said they went to the living room to find the sliding door open, and nothing ever happened again. Until... Dot, dot, dot. A year later, my dad had a sudden fatal heart attack. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. 
the night after. I was he, expecting the window <laughs> to be open. Not a I know. I attack. thought at Merle. I thought then a year later, later the doors open. Oh, this took a horrific tri- twist. Yeah. A year later, my dad had, had a sudden fatal heart attack. The night after he died, I stayed at their house in the guest room. Mom said she woke up in the middle of the night and found the sliding door open again. She's sure that it was Merle coming one last time to get dad. Nothing happened after that, and shortly after, she sold the property and moved into town. I miss my dad, but it comforts me to think that maybe Merle did come for him. Oh, I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for that either. Do you think it was Merle coming to get Dad? It'd been a year since anything happened. I do think it was Merle. And once Dad said to Merle, like, quit this, and everything did quit. But then it does give you some comfort, too, to be like, you know, they're really close, and now they're together. Uh, That's a really touching story. Yeah. But I love how, you know, doors keep opening, and they're like, oh, Merle. They just accepted it was moral. And I'm glad the mom moved. That had to have been hard for her to live there. That was such a turn. I know. I wasn't ready for that. Well, if you like the show and want an ad-free experience, sign up to be a premium subscriber. Go through Apple Podcasts. Try it three days free. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. For all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thank you for listening.